Today in our 2012 Chevrolet Equinox, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the E-Trailer Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number E98865. So here's what our hitch is going to look like once we have it installed. The cross tube is going to be hidden behind the bumper mostly, and the main thing we're going to see is the receiver tube sticking out. Now it is a Class 3 hitch, which means it's going to give us that 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening which is going to open up a lot of doors for all sorts of different kind of accessories. The way we're going to mount any of our accessories is the hitch pin hole here on the side and it is going to accept a standard 5 8 pin and clip. While these aren't included in the kit you can pick them up here at eTrailer.com along with some locking devices to keep your accessories safe. The safety chain loops are going to be a plate style welded to the bottom and as you can see we're not going to have too much trouble getting most size hooks on or off and they are just slightly angled away from the hitch pin hole so we shouldn't have too much trouble with interference from a locking device and our safety chains. Our hitch is going to have a 350 pound tongue weight which is the maximum downward force at the receiver tube and also a 3500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's going to be the amount it can pull including the trailer and everything we have loaded on it. Now the hitch is rated for use with weight distribution systems and that's going to be a separate component mounted on your trailer. However, that's going to bump the tongue weight up to 400 pounds and the gross trailer weight rating up to 4,000 pounds. Now with those numbers in mind, you always want to double check your Equinox's owner's manual and never exceed the manufacturer's recommended towing weight. I'd like to give you a few measurements that will help you in deciding for accessories for your new hitch such as a ball mount, bike rack, or even a cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of the bumper, it's going to be right about 4 and 3 quarter inches. That measurement is going to come in handy when you're looking at folding accessories to make sure you have enough clearance so it doesn't come in contact with the rear bumper. And from the ground to the inside top edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be right about 14 and 3 quarter inches. That measurement is going to come in handy when looking at ball mounts to make sure you get the appropriate rise or drop for your trailer. And also at that height, I would definitely recommend a bike rack or a cargo carrier with the Ray shank to give us a little bit more ground clearance. So now that we've seen what our hitch looks like and gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to come to the back of our Equinox. If we look at the bottom of the bumper, we're going to have this cutout here. We're going to have to remove it so that our hitch will have room to fit in. If we come underneath and behind, we're going to have these little tabs that are holding it in place. And usually you can kind of just squeeze them. And that will release it so we can pull it down. But if you are having a little bit of trouble squeezing it by hand, you can grab a pair of pliers and squeeze the outside of it and at the same time pull down on that panel until it comes out and we can take the other side out. Once both sides are released, we're just going to pull slightly away and pull out and we'll release these plastic clips and we'll have the opening right here. Now this panel is not going to be getting reinstalled once we have our hitch in place. Now on the outside of the frame on each side, we're going to have two weld nuts that are going to be in the frame. Now it's always a good idea to go ahead and spray a little bit of lubricant or penetrating oil into the weld nuts. I'm going to take a nylon brush and we're going to make sure that there's no dirt, debris or rust inside so when we do start putting in our hardware, it won't get cross threaded. So we're going to go ahead and clean the other side which will have two more weld nuts. At the center, at the very back of our bumper, if we look up, we're going to have two rectangular holes as well as two circular holes on the outside of those. The round ones are going to be a mounting location for our hitch but we're going to have to get our hardware in place. So we're going to take our pull wire, feed the coiled end in and we're going to go to the outside of the frame so we'll feed it all the way in until that coiled end comes out. It's going to come out the outside edge of the frame here. Now you want to put a little bit of a bend in there so that neither side falls back in. And then we'll take our square hole spacer block. We're going to slide it over the coiled end. Then we're going to take one of our carriage bolts and we'll thread it on. And we're going to feed the block and the bolt into the end of the frame and pull on our pull wire until the bolt drops through the block and through the frame. Now we're going to want to remove the pull wire carefully and not damage it because we're going to have to repeat that process 
for the other circular hole on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch up. We're gonna line up the holes in the center with the bolts that we dropped through. Then we're gonna take a flange nut and we're gonna secure it to those carriage bolts. And we're gonna get these started so the hitch will support itself and we don't have to worry about it falling down. With our hitch still loose, we're gonna have two more mounting holes, those weld nuts on the side. We're gonna take one of our M12 bolts and a conical tooth washer. Now you wanna make sure that the teeth are gonna be facing towards the hitch. We'll lift our hitch up. We're just gonna loosely thread these in place. Again, making sure you get at least a couple turns so that the bolts don't cross thread in there. And once we have these two in, we'll go ahead and put the other two on the other side in. With all the hardware in place, I'm gonna come back with a 19 millimeter socket and I'm gonna snug up my M12 bolts. For our flange nuts, we can either use a three quarter inch socket or that same 19 millimeter socket to tighten them up. I'm gonna come back with that same 19 millimeter socket and torque wrench. I'm gonna torque all my hardware down to the specified amount in the instructions. And we're gonna repeat that for any remaining hardware that we have. That'll finish up your look at the E-Trailer Class 3 Custom Fit Trailer Hitch Receiver, part number E98865 on our 2012 Chevrolet Equinox.